is the breakfast and plus tv africa the anambra state governor charles saludo on friday visited the detained leader of the indigenous people of biafra namdi kanu the governor whose visit was part of a wider consultation with critical stakeholders in search of lasting peace and security in the southeast said that ipop leaders or oh, IPOP leader who was in a very high spirit, Namdi Kanu, who expressed sadness over the loss of lives and properties in the Southeast called for restoration of peace in the state. He described the numerous deaths as sacrilege, sacrilegious killings of innocent persons, killing, kidnapping, and all forms of criminalities, including brutal enforcement of senseless seat-at-home order, perpetrated by sundry groups claiming to be acting on behalf of IPOP. We have a guest uh, joining uh, the conversation this morning, Nika Gule. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me. All right. Nika Gule, what do you make of, I mean, the statement and thoughts of Namdi Khan as regards the situation in the southeastern part of Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much for that question. I think before I comment on Linda Bicano, I would like to comment on Governor Charles Oludo. I give him kudos for taking the step to go and visit with Linda Bicano and also have discussions with him in his work to look for solutions to the security issues, specifically in the Southeast and particularly in a member state where he is governing. I think this is what all our leaders need to do. Uh, insecurity cannot be fought only with guns and bullets. There has to be discussions. Government must be willing to listen to agitations, to understand why Nigerian citizens we either take up arms against the state or have one grievance or the other and see how this thing can be discussed and resolved. So to that extent, I thank, I want to thank uh, Governor Soludo for taking this step. And now, back to Nadi Kanu in terms of what he said. From what he said, he has totally absorbed IPOB from the senseless killings that are happening in the Southeast. He absorbed IPOB from the sit at home orders that have been issued, all of that. I am not in a position to say whether Nandi Kano is telling the truth or not. That is a job for the security agencies and our law enforcement agencies to dig into the matter. If the Nigerian law enforcement agencies are so smart as to have gone all the way to Kenya to go and abduct Nandi Kano and repatriate him to Nigeria through intelligence, covert operations, everything that is put into it, that same security and law enforcement apparatus should be able to investigate the killings in the Southeast and pin it on somebody. Is it that a pin it on IPOP of which Nadi Kanu is the leader? Or they pin it on the people that Nadi Kanu alleges are the ones behind the killings? We cannot allow the killings to be going on, and there is a trading of blames between Unabu Tano, the federal government. Because for the families of those who have been killed, this trading of blames does not help them. And for those who are in the Southeast, they know that it can be anybody's turn tomorrow. And that sense of insecurity is not good for the country, it's not good for the economy, it's not good for the quality, it's not good for the orderly conduct of society. So we have to have a resolution for this. All right, uh, well said, uh, Nick. I, 
understand and like your opening salvo, but let's really talk about um, this issue of um, insecurity in the Southeast. Just how far reaching do you think uh, this particular consultation or wide consultation of the number of state governor, Charles Oludo, can really go you know, to stem the tides? Yeah, so, so um, the issue of insecurity in the Southeast is unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Because for most of us, we just read it on the news. So many numbers have been killed. So many numbers have been killed. And we just move on to the next breaking story. But for the families who are directly impacted by this killing, they have lost loved ones. A gap, a void, a gulf has been created in their lives. And they are living with this every day. It's not going to be easy to fill the gap that has been created. So these families are going through a lot of trauma. And Nigeria is not a place where a family suffers such a tragedy and the government, through the social services, sends counselors to them to help them cope with the trauma. We don't have things like that. So lives are being destroyed, families are being torn apart. This thing has to stop. That is the first thing that has to happen. Now, how to stop it? There is no one size fits all solution. All of the available means to bring peace to the Southeast must be explored. They must and have to be explored. We are the traditional institution. They should pretend over their various communities. These people that come out, key security agencies, key citizens, and all of that, they're not falling from the sky. They are living within communities. And the people in those communities, they know them. When they go and commit atrocities and come back, they are aware of this. And this is where the traditional institution needs to come. In providing the necessary information, to the security agencies. But even before they do that, they can call these people to talk to the round table and say, this senseless killing doesn't make meaning. There are other ways that the agitations can be satisfied. That is traditional institution. You have the government at various levels. There are local government and there is a state government. In all of the Southeast, in all the five Southeast states, you have five governors, you have probably. All right, I think uh, we have um, lost him. We'll try and reconnect with him again. So, Mercy, I really need to, needed to find out just how far this consultation would go because uh, he talked about. Uh, Blame trade, uh, it's IPOP, it's not IPOP, uh, those trying to masquerade themselves as IPOP. At the end of the day, you know, families of, of these victims, they are yet to, you know, get, um, you know, closure on all of these killings. Closure can be a very big and sensitive issue, trust me. Mm. I mean, it, it can be difficult when people want to get closure. And that might just um, necessarily be what they need at a time, mm. you know, to just end it. Maybe the closure. Mm. The found that, okay, this is what it is, and those yes. who are involved, and then we have a declaration, I mean, arrests being made, and what have you. But um, it, it, it still brings us back to the point where we would have to talk about where is the place of the police? Mm. We, we, because it, it looks as if every other time that we leave, we constantly talk about, oh, it feels like it's a helpless situation. Are we really in a helpless situation? Isn't this a government? Don't we have um, the security architecture that's been put out to ensure that at the external level, you have the military who saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that the territorial integrity of the country is protected against external aggressions. And so you come to these, you know, internal affairs of the country, then you expect that the police is started with our responsibility. Mm. 
So whether or not this IPOP is not IPOP, somebody's parading or masquerading and impersonating, where is the police of the police, the Nigerian sure. police force in mm -hmm. all of this? Why haven't we have? Is it that we have been overwhelmed and overcome by the happenings? It is, it is really, really sad. And uh, fine, you know, when you asked uh, uh, Open Up in Ontario about, uh, you know, what he uh, made about uh, Namdi's uh, candle, uh, candles and position, he said, uh, uh, it's, uh, he sounded two faced, uh, except he has repented, you know, then because he had initially uh, gone out to the public and said that those who or those Igbos too who do not support him, the cause, uh, you know, should be killed. And now he's saying that um, he is not aware of the killings uh, you know, going on in the southeast, that it is not IPOP, and even the seat at home order uh, allegedly being, um, you know, uh, done by the IPOP members, uh, he knows nothing about it. Yeah, so uh, like I, I earlier mentioned that it caused for a lot of concern prior to this time, we, we should have been very observant. So you look at the patterns and the behavior at the time where you had IPOP coming out to say, hey, I mean, this IPOP, there's a group called IPOP, indigenous people, up until when you have the government saying they have been proscribed as terrorists, I mean, the prescription that was on, right? You should have actually looked at how was the pattern, well, how was the behavior activities, what really happened at the time, and juxtapose that with what's going on, really. Mm to understand. There's been a disclaimer. If you have a disclaimer that's been put, it means that the security agency, it means that the Nigerian police force should get to work mm -hmm. and find out who are these persons behind. If the IPOP is saying that we're not responsible for this, then who is responsible for all of this crime and through, criminality? You know, like he said, rightly said, Nick, that he's, uh, you know, they were, you know, very organized as it is to go to Kenya to you know, NAB and the candle as it is, that they should also go the extra mile to do their job and ensure, you know, those who are behind um, this particular killing, so they're masqueraded or not, they uh, would be brought to book. I also must commend um, Charles Saluto for the initiative that he's taken. He is uh, just um, new, uh, he's barely spent um, three months uh, in um, a number of states. This he's would been. score him a political point. Mm. You know, well, maybe. But in fact, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I think. Uh, uh, maybe because uh, the seat at home is actually more prominent uh, in uh, a number of states, but I think uh, this issue of Southeast security, you know, the, the, the Southeast leaders, uh, governors should come together again. There was a time they did, and they came out to the Ibu Bago, you know, to stem the tide, but ever since then, I don't know how far Ibu Bago has gone, and I think they need to meet yet again to discuss this issue of uh, killing, sir. In the south, is I know it, it doesn't just happen in a number of states. It also happens in Imo State and some other eastern states. And they need to come together, you know, forge a common front and find plausible solutions to all of this. So there's been a lot of speculation as to some persons who are responsible carrying all of these activities out. I mean, at a time you hear some governors uh, having a hand in mm -hmm. the insecurity in the region and in some yeah. states. Mm -hmm. well, my concern is if you have a region. Let's be very honest. Let's, let's, let's put the cards on the table. I mean, the cards on the table. And let's look at the conversation. If you have a region who's saying that this is what we're calling for, these persons are asking for um, a republic. They are asking for self-actualization. They want to be self-sufficient. I mean, they just want to be independent of the entire system. That's Nigeria now. Should it not be a concern of, you know, the center? Mm. Should the center not be concerned about this? Mm -hmm. Why have we gone through... things are through... falling apart. The center will definitely not yes. hold. So why is the center not concerned about this? This, this? this are questions that I ask myself on a daily basis. And I don't know. I'm sure that it, it might just also be a Nigerian question. Why is the center not concerned about this? A group of persons are saying that we have been marginalized. We haven't been carried along. What you're asking for, we want to be... Uh, we want to be on our own for several reasons. And why haven't we had a conversation if we're very honest with um, the mode of operandi? I mean, we're saying that, okay, we don't want you to go away. It, it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. It doesn't state anywhere that it's compulsory. As a matter of fact, as an individual, I do have a right to denounce my citizenship as a Nigerian. 
That's what, you, that's what we need to know. I can decide to say I don't want to become a Nigerian anymore, like I want to denounce my citizenship. The Constitution guarantees all of that. Mm. And so it is not a betrayal. It is not contrary to the law. But why are we treating all you of this? To, why is the center not consent? And why has the center not incorporated this? We've had a constitutional review. Why has this not become a crux of the conversation? Why has the Ninth Assembly not considered all of this? And okay. with the fact that you have these governors and House of Representatives and Senators in a different part because they're also part of the system, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? But uh, we have um, Nick Agule uh, back um, on air or on the air. Thank you for staying with us, uh, Nick. Yeah, th thank you. We're, part of, we're, we're back in network uh, issues. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Some days are just uh, like that. Uh, Mercy and I have been, you know, making conversations concerning all of this, uh, the agitations in the southeast, uh, self-determination, uh, the place of the leaders, and uh, why the center is not listening and all of that. But uh, I, uh, I uh, asked the Mercy, the place of um, the southeast leaders in all of this. Uh, you have rightly said that um, uh, Saludo should be commended for what he's doing so far, consultation and not, but. Don't you think uh, the Southeast leaders have to even do more to forge a common front? Yes, indeed. They, they have to do more. Um, we meet in a federation called the Federal Republic of Nigeria that is made up of over 200 or more ethnic nationalities. So we are not uh, homogeneous. Given that, it, it becomes imperative that if any ethnic nationality feels that they are better outside the Nigerian Federation, then we have to be, they have to be given a voice. They have to be given a voice to be heard. Because refusing to give them a, a voice becomes imprisonment. That means we're, we're forcefully holding them to be part of the Nigerian Federation by force against their will. But how can they be given a voice? The only way to give a voice to any nationality that agitates to leave the Federation of Nigeria is through a referendum. But unfortunately, the Constitution of Nigeria does not have a referendum. I mean, let's be very clear about this. The constitution we operate, the, the so-called 1999 constitution, this is a contraction that was put together by the military, who we are intending to transmute from Taki to Abda. They couldn't have given us a civil constitution that would challenge their power. The military are not known, are not known for that. So all this why for 22 years now, what we needed is for the National Assembly to actually take this constitution apart and rebuild a proper democratic civil constitution for Nigeria that grants the citizens rights such as referendum, self-determination. Because if we have a referendum in the constitution, then the referendum will be called. If the majority of South Eastern in Nigeria decide that wherever they are, all over in the 30 states of Nigeria, they want to go back to the five states of the Southeast so that they can form their own nation, so be it. All right, uh, Nika Gule. Well, but then again, so. That one wonders what happened to all the moves that has been made to ensure that and this issue of um, insecurity in the southeast uh, is brought under. First of all, the governors met uh, you know, sometime last year and they talked about Ibubago and all that, but it's as though nothing uh, has changed in recent times. Then what's the essence? Of course. Okay. Um, we yeah. have been disconnected with Nika Gule. So the, the conversation would, would, would continue and we would have the back and forth and I always would like to ask. I don't think it's because we don't understand the dynamics and we don't understand the implication of all of this as a people. 
we have stakeholders. You can't take out the government from the equation. We understand it, but there's no um, willpower, there's no political will, if you want to say, to go ahead with the actions. The problem with us is not that we don't know what the problem is, because usually you ask yourself, is it that we don't understand what the problem is? I mean, is it so difficult? Is it rocket science? Because rocket science is very possible. But the question is, do we have the backings? Uh, do we, um, are we honest with our thoughts? And are we looking at the conversation? Are we even really honest with the people that we say uh, we have been elected? to represent our interests, this person has elected us to represent because that's the proclamation that's been made. And so, yes, I was elected president, I was elected governor, I was elected whatever um, House of Representative member and what have you bought. Is that in its true sense? Is that what we're doing? Are we living up to that expectation? Hmm. That's, that's a, a really hard one. We, we know what the issues are. We are not doing all that we need to do, and Nigerians are just dying by the numbers, and the police and the security agencies are not really being proactive about this, and yet lives should be lost um, by the day. It is really very sad what's happening in the Southeast, uh, what's happening across Nigeria in security generally, you know, with the killings here and there, the banditry, the kidnapping. I just wonder when we'll get to that point. You know, I remember growing up, um, kidnapping was really alien to us. Uh, issues of um, terrorism and the banditry was not even close. We only just watch it in movies and see it uh, in um, uh, Western films. But I don't know how we got to this extent. And um, Because we're evolving as a people. Who's punishing us for our sins? No, nobody's punishing us. I mean, we're evolving, and it's part of humanity. We're evolving, we're interacting with the global community, and we're also not paying attention to the concerns that we have as a people. For instance, Let's look at it. 2023 is here, and we have a, a lot of persons who are saying they want to become president, but how many persons are paying attention to the real These issues? issues so I, I, we have seen presidential aspirants who have come out to say, I want to continue from where he stopped. What does that even mean? Because if you continue from where he stopped, where did he stop? What is going on with where he stopped or where he started? These are the issues. People feel that they're not part of the system. And we understand that when you had the amalgamation process, the fact that you had the regions come together, so you had uh, governance at the time, not the way it is, but it wasn't. So you had a regional government, you had a regional system. And then we had um, the amalgamation of the southern, the eastern, you know, everyone came together. 1914, and yay, we became a, an entity called Nigeria. But a lot of persons do not feel. So we have seen a lot of things that have divided us and further divides us as a people. So you don't even know where to start. Because the issue of security, if you want to deal with it, it's encompassing. It's not just limited to the fact that you have a group of persons who don't believe in a certain thing. And so you say the Boko Haram is on one side. You also have security from the issue that people don't think that they should be together. Whether or not it's IPOP, but you have a group of persons who have decided to say we're not. We don't want to be as an entity. Some persons have decided to, um, you know, impersonate these group of persons. And then they begin to commit crime and criminality. These are issues we should care. I mean, so it, it's a lot from security issues from the fact that oh, people unemployment is also a, an issue. So you have mm -hmm. fine crime and, and criminality happening from unemployment. You also have the fact that you have to deal with a group of persons. You also have the fact that some persons don't feel that they belong. And what is the government doing if you look at how resources? Because you have a government. Government came into existence for a certain purpose. And we exist. The government is in existence for a certain purpose. People have decided to give their will and say, we will submit our will to government. And that's why it's barbaric for people to take the laws into their hands. Sure, because you have a system. And that's why it's wrong that someone would feel that, oh, my religion has been blasphemed. Someone has said evil against me. Therefore, let me take the law God. into your hand. It, it therefore shows that the government, the essence of governance and government has failed. And that's why people are taking the laws. It's not supposed to be so. That's why you have government and that's why you have governance. So let's get back to the drawing board. But with all that's happening, you look at those who are aspiring to become president. Nobody seems to be saying anything. We, it feels like there's a disconnect. Don't we understand what's going on? How do we solve the problem? Mm. All right. Uh, there's a whole lot uh, that is really bedeviling the country. And, um, you know, there are fundamental issues. And we need to go back to the drawing board, like Mercy um, has said. It is to the breakfast. We'll take a quick break and we'll return with more. Stay with us.